A couple of weeks ago, I found this computer in a pile of trash on the side of the road. It had previously belonged to a tool truck company, where it had served them well for the better part of a decade. When I got it home and plugged it in, I discovered it worked without any issues, even though the case was greasy and the cooler was very dusty. Today, we're installing some hardware upgrades to turn this computer into a highly capable home server for running software and services. After the upgrades, we're going to install Proxmox for virtualization and then set up a Minecraft server, as well as Jellyfin for streaming shows and movies. By the end, we'll have transformed this old PC into an inexpensive home server, so stay tuned to see how it goes. The processor this computer had originally is an i3-540 with two cores and four threads running at 3.06 GHz, and while that would be great for a file server, we can definitely do better. Instead, I've got a Xeon X3470 quad-core hyper-threaded processor running at 2.93 GHz and turboing up to 3.6 GHz. Not only are we doubling the cores, but the increased turbo speed should provide a substantial improvement too especially since the X3470 reportedly should have no issues reaching 3.2 GHz on all cores, although I haven't personally tested that yet. To complement the upgraded processor, we're going to need some more memory. We started with 4GB of Kingston value RAM, but I'm replacing it with 16GB to make sure we don't run out. The Minecraft server definitely won't struggle to use 4GB of memory, so without the upgrade we would have already run out and wouldn't have any left for Jellyfin. We need some storage to run Proxmox from, so we're using this cheap 120GB Samsung SSD. It's an 840 EVO, so it does have the performance degradation over time issue, but I'm not overly concerned because I don't use it normally. I would also typically install at least two hard drives and make a ZFS build, but for now it'll do fine without. It did come with one 500GB hard drive, and if it's in good health without too many hours, adding a second one would be reasonable. There's one more thing we need, and that's a graphics card. There's two things it's important for, the first of which is getting the motherboard to post, and the second is that we can pass it through to Jellyfin for hardware accelerated transcoding. The Xeon doesn't have an iGPU, meaning it caused more issues than it really solved, as we'll unfortunately soon see. I have a few cards I could have picked from, but I think a fairly reasonable choice is an NVIDIA Quadro K4200 with 1344 shader cores and 4GB of GDDR5 memory. It's an older card that performs similarly to a GTX 950 and should handle transcoding fairly well. It needs a 6-pin PCIe power connector, which the original power supply surprisingly has. And yes, the shroud is held on with masking tape. But don't worry, the heatsink is screwed in properly. With the upgrades done, it's time to install the operating system. First, I'm going to install Proxmox so we can run virtual machines. It only takes a couple of minutes to install, and then we can move over to the web interface where we'll configure and create our virtual machines. The first piece of software for virtualization is, of course, the Minecraft server. I created a VM in Proxmox with two cores, 6GB of memory, and 16GB of the SSD allocated to it, which is absolutely enough for a single Minecraft server. I could have allocated more cores because of the way Proxmox handles core allocation, meaning we can over-assign them with no issues, so long as all of the VMs aren't exceeding the abilities of the system. In terms of storage, it would take hundreds of Minecraft's region files to fill up the allocated storage, so it would be okay with as little as 8GB, but I did over allocate a little bit to account for the entire Debian install. I uploaded the Debian Linux ISO to Proxmox's content system and installed it on the VM without a desktop environment. Most Linux distros would be perfectly good here, and Ubuntu Server is also a very popular choice. With Debian installed, I downloaded Java 17, as well as the package to build the Minecraft Spigot server, and then built it and created a script to start the server with the necessary arguments for the memory usage. Unlike the vanilla server, Spigot is well optimized for performance, meaning it runs great on most hardware with almost no noticeable lag. It is really meant for running the game with server-side plugins and mods, which can have serious impacts on the performance, but even without them, it runs so much better than vanilla. Here we are, connected to the server, and there's just no lag at all. Minecraft servers are fun, but we can do more than just that. Next up is Jellyfin, 
which turns the system into a media server, complete with a web interface as well as client apps for computers, phones, and even some televisions. I should have installed it in a Linux container rather than a VM, but for simplicity, I made another one and installed Debian on it just like the one for Minecraft. I configured the GPU pass through to the VM, which definitely seemed like it was working, but it, it wasn't, it just wasn't working at all. This time, I started by downloading and installing VSFTPD to create an FTP server as well as UFW to allow connections in and out of the system on specified ports. I configured UFW to allow connections on port 21 for insecure FTP and the four ports that Jellyfin uses for both the web interface as well as service auto discovery. FTP with VSFTPD allows us to transfer media onto the server without setting up a Samba share as we would on a typical NAS. Alternatively, you could mount an already existing Samba share from a different system directly onto the VM and then set it as the Jellyfin library directory, but my NAS wasn't running at the time because the ambient temperature was almost 40 degrees, so I couldn't really do that. Next, I installed curl following the official Jellyfin install guide and then downloaded and ran the install script. With this done, Jellyfin was running and before navigating to the web interface and configuring it, we need a media library folder. The general consensus on the internet seems to be that the media folder in the root directory on Linux is an acceptable place, even though that's really not what it's meant for. With the file permissions set mostly correctly for both my user account as well as the Jellyfin user, I copied over the first season of King of the Hill using FTP and then navigated to the web interface. Technically, I should have created a group and then added the Jellyfin user and my account to it and then set the permissions from there but it worked mostly the way I did it, it just wasn't very good. I was easily able to set up the media library once in Jellyfin and then play the show through the web interface with no issues or frame drops. It works well, but there's one more thing that we need to get set up, and that's the graphics card. I had already passed it through to the VM, or at least I thought I had, and it was detected with the LSPCI command, so it was at least sort of working, but there are a few more steps to make it usable by Jellyfin. The issue came when it was time to install the NVIDIA drivers. I installed all the required components as well as the correct NVIDIA Tesla driver, I believe version 470, which is the one that supposedly works for this card. The driver detected the card, as expected, but wasn't functional at all, and the NVIDIA SMI utility gave an error indicating the driver wasn't running. Even after removing and reinstalling all of the driver and CUDA components, it didn't work. After about an hour and a half of troubleshooting, I had to concede that I wasn't getting anywhere, but I did at least figure out what the issue is. Proxmox doesn't like passing through the system's only graphics card, so the choice to use the X3470 with the K4200 was my first mistake. Proxmox does have a console you can access with a display connected to the system, and with that running, it means the graphics card displaying that can't be used for anything else. We need an iGPU to run the local console, freeing up the K4200 to be passed through, or alternatively, I could just run Debian on the hardware without Proxmox and have direct access to the graphics card. It is definitely possible to get single GPU pass through working, and plenty of people have done it, but in the interest of actually finishing this video this century, I didn't spend any more time on it. Even without the hardware acceleration though, we can stream shows and movies to any device on my home network, as well as playing Minecraft at the same time. While this computer was meant to end up in the trash, with some basic, inexpensive hardware upgrades, it's become a capable home server for virtualization and media streaming. As this is a micro ATX desktop computer, there's even more potential for upgrades than what I've already done. Instead of a graphics card, we could install a 10 gigabit network interface or even a SAS drive controller, although we can only have one of those cards at once because the board only has a single PCIe by 16 slot. Most 2.5 gigabit network cards only need to buy one slot, and even though it'd be running at 2.0 speeds, that's still completely adequate, and the same goes for 10 gigabit in the by 16 slot. There's a few things that aren't so good though, the first of which is that this generation of processors is missing out on some really great features that would be useful for some of the software we can run. For hardware accelerated transcoding in Jellyfin, there's no support for Intel QuickSync because it was introduced just one generation later for Sandy Bridge, but the graphics card fixes that at the cost of increased power draw and misery with Proxmox. 
Most of the more powerful, higher core count processor options for this platform, including the Xeon X3470, don't include integrated graphics, and this board didn't want to post without a GPU of some kind, so a PCIe graphics card is unfortunately required. The second major problem is the 95 watt TDP of the processor, meaning at a full load, it produces the same amount of heat as, for example, an i7-2600, which performs on the whole quite a bit better and does also support Intel QuickSync. The LGA 1156 platform is getting quite old, meaning it isn't really very power efficient for the performance we get from it and produces a lot of heat to go with that. While it can run the software I installed on it, it's not a particularly good platform for it anymore and is also a complete dead end for processor upgrades. Ideally, I'd also replace the power supply because the original Power Man branded one doesn't give me much confidence. In my research, I didn't find much about it, but something more modern would be better and probably more efficient too. Overall though, even though it's not the best hardware anymore, it performed well, and for the price, there's very little that I'd change. The upgrades didn't cost me anything either, because I had all the parts lying around already, so it's pretty much the cheapest home server I've ever used. In terms of the software, Jellyfin was very impressive, and the system didn't struggle to run it at all. My first experience using it was pretty decent, but it does require quite a bit of learning and some trial and error, especially with the Linux folder permissions, which I struggled with, and the hardware acceleration, of course. Both the Minecraft server and Jellyfin could have, and probably should have, been run in Linux containers rather than full VMs, which would reduce the overhead and can improve performance without any real downsides for either of them. That doesn't work for everything, especially for software that runs on BSD, like TrueNAS Core, but it's something I'll be looking into for Jellyfin in the future. There is plenty more we could do with this system, but that's all for today. So, if you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you gave it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all next time.